What if dark matter isn't made of exotic particles? What if it's made of something we already know exists? Black holes. Not the massive ones at the center of galaxies, but tiny ancient black holes formed in the earliest moments of the universe. For nearly a century, dark matter has been a mystery haunting the universe. We see its effects everywhere. The way galaxies spin and collide, how clusters hold together, and even tiny ripples in the cosmic microwave background. But no telescope has ever seen dark matter. It doesn't emit light, reflect it, or block it. It's completely invisible, yet it holds the universe together. So what is it? One idea seems simple. What if dark matter isn't made of exotic particles? What if it's something we already know populates the universe? Something that doesn't emit light and interacts only gravitationally? In other words, what if dark matter is just a hidden population of black holes scattered across the universe? At first glance, it makes sense. Massive stars die, collapse, and form black holes. But there is a problem. If dark matter came from dead stars, its abundance would increase over time as more stars die. But dark matter was already here from the beginning, way back when the universe universe was just 380,000 years old, as we see in the cosmic microwave background. And even in the early universe, there weren't enough supernovae to explain the vast amount of dark matter we could detect. So stellar black holes are not a candidate. But what if there is another kind of black holes? One that didn't come from dying stars, but from the Big Bang itself. You see, the early universe wasn't perfectly smooth. Some regions were denser than others. If those dense regions collapsed under their own gravity, they would become denser until their escape velocity surpasses the speed of light, which is the definition of a black hole. So before stars even existed, black holes could have formed. These would be primordial black holes born in the first fractions of a second after the Big Bang. They wouldn't increase over time, they would be ancient as old as the universe. And unlike stellar black holes, they wouldn't violate any of our cosmological data. In 2015, LIGO made history by detecting gravitational waves from merging black holes. But there was a surprise. The black holes that collided weren't the typical ones we expected. The average one was around 26 times the mass of our sun, much heavier than usual stellar black holes. And we have almost no clue how these black holes formed. One possibility is that they are primordial black holes, slowly merging over billions of years. But the chance of random black holes drifting close enough to merge is insanely low. So even this remains a mystery. How big would these primordial black holes be? They can't be supermassive because they would dominate galaxy centers, and we would have noticed extra ones floating around. They can't be massive enough to bend light so much because we would see that through gravitational lensing surveys, and we don't. So they must be small, maybe asteroid-sized, maybe even smaller. And here comes the twist. According to Stephen Hawking, tiny black holes slowly evaporate over time through Hawking radiation. If they are small enough, they could have evaporated by now, leaving behind what's known as naked singularities, hypothetical objects that are basically invisible which makes them a weirdly perfect dark matter candidate. They could be out there everywhere, even right here in this room. Another idea is machos, massive compact halo objects. These include black holes, neutron stars, or other dead stellar remnants hiding in the galactic halos. But again, the numbers don't work. Machos would cause detectable gravitational lensing, and we just don't see enough of it. Primordial black holes and naked singularities haven't been drilled out as the building blocks of dark matter. They remain one of the most fascinating dark matter candidates. If they do exist, they could be all around us, parts of the invisible scaffolding holding the universe together. Black holes and quantum mechanics clash in a paradox so strange. It suggests one of them has to be wrong. We broke it down here in this video, so check it out for the full story.